Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video. Alright, so I did a frequency separation video before this one. Uh, if you'd like to see the frequency separation video, how to create a frequency separation action, you can check the, um, the description uh, below or you can check the card right up there. Alright, so um, yes, we're going to retouch this image. All right, so I'm in Camera Raw right now. This is a JPEG image, but I'm in Camera Raw. Uh, I'm gonna crop this image, um, and the, let me see here. All right, my pen is not working. All right, good. So it's gonna be cropped to a four to five ratio. Um, right here, should be good, no, maybe right here. All right, I'm going to click enter or press enter on my keyboard. And then the background is a black background. I was using a sheet. I'm just going to come right here to blacks and bring down the black a little bit so the background can be more black. All right, good. So that's good. I don't think I need to do anything here, anything else here. Um, this is actually an 8-bit image, and I'm going to edit in 8-bit. All right, so I'm going to open the image now. And then I'm going to go to frequency separation 8-bit. Um, I believe 10 should be good. Or maybe 12. All right, 12. So basically, you should blur the image until you're not seeing any texture. All right, good. So I'm going to work on the low frequency uh, layer. I'm going to go to the mix a brush ensure that you always clear the brush if there's a color here you clear the brush ensure that this option here is on um, you can start your wetness at two percent everything else can remain the same all right so i'm going to get my brush a little bit smaller and i'm going to mix the skin basically i'm flattening the skin and um flattening the skin helps you to clean up the pimples easier because it flattens the pimples as well whenever you're doing um whenever you're using the mixer brush ensure that you work in if you're working in the um highlighted area you work in the highlighted area if you're working in the dark areas you work in the dark areas so you're not going to go from dark to bright dark to bright all right so i'm going to go right here also um to get wonderful images like these you don't need a full frame camera. Um, I had uh, a photographer ask me if, you know, if they can get awesome photos like these um, using a crop sensor. And my answer was yes, because it's not the camera that you use. It's the lightning technique, the makeup artist, the idea, the creativity, right? So it's not about the camera. As you can see, let me see, I can show you what camera I was actually using. I believe I can go to info, um, camera data, see? So this was a Nikon 5300, and that's a cap, that's a um, crop sensor. And I was using the 7200 to uh, millimeter Tamron lens. So you don't need a full frame camera to get awesome photos. You buy a full frame camera to get um, more light in your images and some other stuff but it's not and, and also um, it, it, it if for example if you're using a full frame camera and you're using a 50 millimeter lens um, you'll get the exact 50 millimeter from that lens while if you're using a crop sensor you'll maybe get 85 or yeah something there so it's not a must that you get full frame but as a professional photographer um, you know, if, if you're doing it for a living, it's best to go with a full frame camera because you're getting everything from your images. But it's not a need. <laughs> All right, so so I'm mixing out the um, image. So let's look at the before and after. Before and after. So I'm going to mix the white areas now. The makeup artist for this work i'm gonna put her instagram in the um in the description so you can check out her work all right 
So I'm going to come down here now and mix our shoulders. Looks good. So the mixing actually blends the skin as well. There are times though that you can actually go from the highlighted area to the dark areas. Um, but you know, you're not going to do it too drastically. You're just going to, you know, just take your time and just go over it a little bit just to blend it out. All right. That looks good. Okay. So I think I'm done with the mixing now. What I'm going to do now is to uh, get, I'm going to go to the high frequency layer and go over to my um, clone stamp. It's at 100% and I'm going to sample any area of the skin to clean another section of the skin. For example, here I'm going to hold on on Alt and then click and paint. So your sampler area that you'd like to, um, like a clean area to go over the pimples. Or anything you'd like to remove from the image itself. Alright, the face looks good. I didn't have um, I didn't have much um, editing to do to the face because her skin is clean. So let's go down to the arm, shoulder. Yeah, to the shoulders, not the not the arm, the shoulder. <laughs> good so frequency separation is always best because you don't blur the skin and it doesn't look it looks realistic when you do um, frequency separation but if you blur the skin it doesn't look real it looks surreal and your images won't look professional if it looks that way I remember the days I used to do um, retouching on I used to blur the skin because that's the only way I actually knew how to retouch an image. Um, sometimes it was overdone and you know it didn't look so real. A lot of problem. A lot of people actually had problems with it, while some who don't really understand, you know, what an image should look like would actually love it. But I knew that it wasn't that good, and I actually thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna try to find a way how to edit my images just like how I'm seeing other professional photographers doing it, like the magazine type of photos and stuff like that. And I went to YouTube and I found and I found frequency separation and frequency separation with mixer brush. And now I can retouch any image looks perfect without any flaws, any blur skin or anything like that. And I'm still learning, so it's not the end of the road yet. <laughs> I'm still not at the point where I want to be. All right, so let's look at the before and after. So hold on an Alt and then put the mouse over the indicate um, layer. So that's what we had before and that's what we have now. Alright, so I'm going to work on this little section here a little bit. I'm just going to get my clone stamp tool again and try to, you know, even out here a little bit where the makeup is. So I bring it down a little bit. Or, hmm, what I could do, I could use this layer, get my brush and sample right here and then I'm going to put this at the fill at about three and I'm going to fill right here. So 
So let's but let's look at the before and after now. All right, I think I could fix here a little bit more. I think that looks good. Or it could be better. But for now, well, let me see. I could lower the opacity a little bit so it looks a little more real. All right, good. That should be good. What we're going to do now is to create a dodge and burn action. All right, and we're also going to save it. So what you have to do first is come right here and unclick the button option. Then you're going to come down to where it says set and then you're going to name this dodge and burn. All right. Then you're going to go to new action. We can name this dodge and burn as well. I'm going to put it at green and then click record. The first thing you're going to do is to come to the adjustment layer, go to uh, go to curves and then go to screen. All right. And then we're going to name this dodge and then we're gonna click on the mask right there and then control I to invert it we're gonna create a second one by clicking on by holding on control and then J and we're gonna name this burn then we're gonna change it to multiply all right then we're gonna put it in a group so hold on on well shift and then the second one then control G for the group and then rename it to dodge and burn when you've done that now you can just open it and click on the one that you want to start with it doesn't matter and then you're going to stop the action after stopping the action you're going to save it so you're going to come to the top here again but you have to select the action first and then click save action it's already named dodge and burn you can save it right here in the preset option if you want or you can save it somewhere else i'm going to save it in one of my um, folders i'm going to go to where is it where is it software go to actions i think i saved it here already but i'm going to name it andre designs dodge and burn and save all right good so now we have the dodge and burn layer we're going to work on them all right, so I'm going to work on the dodge first. I'm going to get my brush at 2% flow, and it's a soft brush. And I'm going to work on the dark area. So the burn is the dark area. And basically, I'm shaping the face. So sometimes when you use the mixer brush, it flattens the image. So if you want to give it back you know, a dimension, you do the dodge and burn to give it back. Um, the highlights and the shadows and stuff like that. So all the sections that, you know, were actually dark, you paint them in. If you want to see what it was like before, you can unclick the um, frequency separation layer and then you can see what it was before and you know exactly what to work on. All right. So right here is a little bit dark right here. Uh, right here. But I like to work on the frequency separation layer. I like to work with it while it's on. <laughs> All right, so um, right here, right here. That looks good. Let's look at the before and after, before, after, before, after. So you see it shaped the face and it looks, it doesn't look flat anymore. All right, so we're going to go down to the dodge and dodge is working on the lighted area, or the highlighted area. So in here, light was hitting there so we have to paint there right under the well on the cheek but oh, that's too much all right right here right here right here right here as well on the on the chin and this a highlighted area right here right here All right, that looks good. Let me put this here as well. All right, that looks good to me. Let me just look at the before and after. See the big difference? Big difference. All right, let me look on everything now. 
before and after, before and after. Good. Um, blend out here a little bit. All right. What we're going to do now is to, well, I would color the image a little bit, but because this image was not, this, this image was a JPEG image, so it already has all the colors in it. So I really don't need to do any coloring to this image, but I'm going to work on the eyes a little bit. I'm going to let the eyes pop a little bit. If you can see here, all right, we're going to go back down to the frequency separation layer. And I'm going to click on the high layer and I'm going to get my, um, this is a patch tool. And I'm just going to clean, I'm going to get rid of this eye. Get rid of this out of the eye. This is up the eye. This is the, the hair from the, um, the eyelash. So this is the eyelash. <laughs> all right, so I got rid of that rid of that all right let's look at it bef well before and after all right so I'm going to brighten the eyes a little bit so I'm gonna come back down here to the adjustment layer and go to curves then I'm going to in the middle pull it up then I'm gonna control I to invert get my brush at 2% and I'm gonna paint some sections of the eye. No, you know what? I'm going to go to 100%. It's faster. All right. Good. All right. The eyes are popping. Let's look at the eyes. Good. Eyes are popping. All right, so that's it for the image. I don't think there's anything else for me to do with this image. It's always good to keep it simple. Let's look at the before again and the after. All right. I mean, there are a few other things that we could do. We could, you know, darken here a little bit because the paint or whatever the makeup artist used is going in, in the hair. We could just, um, what could we do? We could just go back to the adjustment layer here and get the um, adjustment tool again, the curve, and then invert. And with my brush, I'm just going to paint right here and just darken it a little bit. So it's not so obvious. Over here again, right here, right here. Yeah, so that looks better. Oh, we could still go ahead and clean it up a little bit more, but... <laughs> Um, for right now, we don't need to, but you get the idea. All right, guys, so thanks for watching, and please subscribe, please like my video, please share it, please comment. If there's anything you'd like me to do, um, just send me a message, send me, you know, comment in the comment area what you'd like me to do, anything you want me to touch on. If you want me to explain the process a little bit more in detail, you can ask, I'll do it. Um, so thanks for watching, and more videos coming soon. Bye-bye.